OK, let's continue. We are on page 58, line 17. Um, so it says he usually arrives at the airport two hours before his flight is scheduled to depart. Again, the word flight here is the noun for fly. So basically, flight is talking about his airplane. To depart is to leave, to be scheduled to do something. The word schedule is a timetable. Um, so to be scheduled to do something means that it's planned to happen. Um, two hours seems pretty safe in Taiwan. In the US, however, sometimes security can take even longer. Um, so two hours may be just enough time. So he gets to the airport, right? He arrives at the airport. He checks in. So he goes to the desk, registers. Um, when you check in, you also, uh, if you have extra luggage, if you're bringing a lot of things, you also have to check in your luggage. Uh, you give that extra stuff to the airline and they will put it in the airplane for you. So there are two kinds of luggage. Uh, one is check in luggage and the other is carry on luggage. Carry on just means that you are going to take it on the airplane. Um, there are. Uh, a few differences between these two. Usually carry on luggage, there is a limit to how much you are allowed to take with you. Uh, and there's also some limits on what kinds of things you can take, right? So no knives, uh, no huge bottles of liquid. Um, but if you put those things in your check in luggage, that's fine. I think the only thing you can't put in your check in luggage is uh, bombs, Zadan. And also like biological stuff. So plants and animals, you have to register first. So after he checks in, uh, when you check in, you, you uh, give the desk your passport and your travel information, visa application, and your check-in luggage, and, and uh, your ticket, your plane ticket. And the desk will process that information and then give you a boarding pass. A pass is something that lets you do something. Boarding here means to get on. So a boarding pass is a piece of paper that you show before they let you get on the airplane. He's also informed of, to be informed of something just means somebody tells you something. Inform, you might recognize the word information. Inform is the verb, so to inform means to to give information to uh, to someone. Uh, so to inform someone of information. Here it's the passive voice, Beidong. He's also informed of his gate number. Uh, this is where in the airport he should go to to find his plane. and his seat number. If his plane ticket did not pick a seat, the check-in desk will give him a seat. Usually you can pick a seat early, but it will cost you more money. 
OK, so he knows where his gate number is. Usually big airports will be divided into different sections. Each section is called a terminal. Hangxia, terminal. The word terminal just means somewhere uh, you have to change transportation. It comes from the Latin word terminus, which means ending. So a terminal is where you end one part of your trip in order to begin the next part of your trip. Uh, but here it just means a section of the airport. So uh, the check in counter will tell him his gate number and usually also his terminal number where in the airport to find his airplane. He can also visit the duty free shops in the airport. Here the word duty does not mean responsibility. Here the word duty means tax. Specifically sales tax. Uh, so duty free means tax free. Once you pass through the security gates in an airport, you actually enter international space. Uh, it's not technically part of the country. So because it is international territory, the government cannot charge tax on business there. Uh, and so you can buy things inside the airport that don't have sales tax. And so inside an airport is where you can find stores that sell things that usually have a lot of tax. Alcohol, cigarettes, yen jiu. Actually, jiu yen. Alcohol, jiu. No. Cigarettes, tobacco, yen. Cosmetics, hua zhuang ping. Things that usually uh, the government would take a lot of money for are very popular inside airports because it's duty free. No taxes. OK, and then Mr. Thompson takes his plane trip. When he arrives at his destination. I really like this word destination. It just means where you are going because the root of this word is Destiny, which is another word for fate, Ming Ring. Uh, so when he gets there, he makes sure that his passport, visa, and arrival card are in order. OK, so we know what a passport is, Hu Zhao. Uh, this word is also very interesting. Pass, right? Just like the boarding pass. It's a piece of paper that lets you go somewhere. Port. Uh, this is where boats stop. Ganko. So a passport lets you go from one country to another using a boat or using a ship. Um, it was invented before airplanes. So um, a lot of the words that we use for plane travel are actually taken from ship travel on the ocean. So like a plane captain, right? The captain of a plane, captain of a ship. Another word is passport. Doesn't matter how you get from one country to another. The, the small booklet that uh, lets you do this is called a passport using the uh, ocean ship word. We also talked about the visa, the piece of paper that says your destination country will let you inside the country. But there's also an arrival card. If you go uh, take a plane trip to a different country before you land, the flight attendant 
uh, Hang Fu Ren will pass out arrival cards. And these are small pieces of paper where you have to fill in your passport number, your visa number, and other basic information. So uh, this piece of paper, once you get to the other country and you have to go through uh, customs, Haiguan, you have to give the customs officer, all of this information. So passport, visa, and your arrival card. Right, so he can quickly go through customs and immigration. Hai uh, The word custom means uh, local culture, the way that people in one place do things, the way they think, the way they act, the way they talk. Immigration is when you move from one country to another to live. Yimin. So customs and immigration is the kind of international security. They are in charge of uh, controlling who can enter and yeah, who can enter the country. Yeah, so once he passes through customs and immigration, he is officially in that country. I'm sure here is the US. And then he goes to pick up his luggage. Um, the way that airports usually do this is uh, they will tell you if you are from this airplane, go to this place to pick up your check in luggage and they will have like a, a thing uh, it will, they will have like a machine, right? It will spit out people's luggage onto a conveyor belt that will move in circles around and around, and you have to find which one is your luggage. Um, so like when you pack your check-in luggage, it's a good idea to prepare for the luggage to be thrown around, bumped, you know, don't pack anything fragile. Okay, and then uh, Mr. Thompson has some advice. Always pack lightly. Here the word light means the opposite of heavy. Qing. So to pack lightly. I usually take one check in and one carry on bag. OK, we just talked about these two. A uh, business traveler, you will constantly be on the move. To be on the move means you're always going places. You're not stopping in one place for a long time. So if you're always moving, you don't want to worry about lugging heavy bags with you wherever you go. OK, so the word lug as a verb just means like to carry something heavy around. But you can see here the root of the word luggage, xing li. Right, it's a heavy bag that you take with you. So instead, Mr. Thompson says, just bring the essentials. The essentials, bi shu ping. Another way to say this is necessities, bring the necessities. Both the word uh, essential and necessity both mean um, something that you have to have, something very important. So bring only the essentials and the necessities and leave the rest at home. Don't carry a lot of cash. It depends on which country you're going to. If you go to a Western country, uh, most places now are not used to 
taking cash. So this makes sense, but if you go elsewhere in the world, cash is still very important. If you need to change currency, convert currency, uh, don't do it at the airport. It's always more expensive at the airport. If you need to exchange currency, do it before you leave. You can go to the Bank of Taiwan to uh, change NTD to uh, other kinds of money. OK, the next piece of advice is a bit outdated. You should take most of your money in traveler's checks. <laughs> no, bring a credit card. Keep your receipts in a safe and separate place. This is true. Receipt, so do. Uh, safe place, OK? Separate place. Why separate? If you keep everything together and you lose your bag, you lose everything. But if you keep things in different places, um, even if you lose one bag, you still have everything else. OK, but the reason to do this is not the same as Mr. Thompson says. He says, keep your receipts safe. So if you lose your traveler's checks, you can quickly get replacements. You can get new ones. Well, if you don't use traveler's checks, there's another reason you should save your receipts. Um, usually, I think in most countries, when you buy something, there will be a sales tax. But if you are not living in that country, you don't have to pay tax. So before you leave, you can go to the airport, bring all of your receipts, and uh, there will be a place where they will give you the tax money back. It's called a tax refund. So it's important to save your receipts. And then finally, credit cards can also be used almost anywhere. Again, if you're going to a Western country, yes. If you're going elsewhere, it's still smart to keep some cash. Xianjing. Um, you should also make sure that your credit card uh, allows you to use it in a foreign country. If you uh, apply for a credit card, one option will be uh, do you want to be able to use it outside of the country? You have to make sure you say yes if you're going to use that credit card when you travel. Try to get plenty of rest before and after your flight. I think this is good advice um, any time in life. Try to get plenty of rest. If you don't have to come to school at 8 a.m., don't. Uh, but the reason here is to try to prevent jet lag. You don't want to suffer from jet lag. Jet lag is one of the biggest topics in travel. There are so many different ways that people have of trying to avoid jet lag. It, it's kind of like trying to avoid a hangover, Su Zui. There's so much different, uh, so much different advice, so many different ideas. Um, but there doesn't seem to be one way that works for everyone. You can try to sleep before, you can try to sleep on the plane, you can try to sleep early when you get there or late when you get there. You can get there and then tr try to power through the whole day before you go to sleep. Uh, some people get there and they exercise. Some people try to drink coffee. Some people don't drink coffee. There are just so many different suggestions. Um, but it's it's really hard.
OK, and then last but not least, remember the old saying when in Rome, do as the Romans do. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. The idea is uh, in Chinese, we call this Ru Jing Sui Su. Do what the local people do. Uh, don't try to, you know, you, you want to try to fit in. Uh, because you are a guest in their country, you don't want to be rude. Uh, so how do you do this? Try to learn as much as possible about the country you're traveling to and follow the local customs. Right, so this use of custom it just means local culture, the way to do things. Follow the local customs, do what they do. Uh, OK, the old saying. Other words for saying can be. Uh, I can't remember. Saying is a good word. You saying the old saying. Uh, I want to point out one more thing, though. Last but not least. Um, a lot of people like to use this kind of phrase, right? First and foremost. Last but not least. But really, you don't have to. These, uh, it just means last, right? The last thing. On the surface, the words mean that this is the last thing, but it is not the least important thing. It is also still important. But nobody would think that it's not important just because you put it last. So why do people say this kind of thing? Um, it actually comes from the 19th century. In the 19th century in the United States, uh, people love to go listen to lectures. Public speaking was very big, very popular. Um, and when you speak on stage, it's different from writing or conversation. It's more a performance. It's more like a kind of performing art. Uh, there is more attention to style and rhythm. And so some speakers felt like the words first and last were too short. It doesn't feel good. So they wanted to find a way to make it sound longer have a bit more rhythm. So they invented the phrases first and foremost and last but not least. This history tells us that these two phrases actually don't mean anything. So you can in just write first and last. You don't have to add this kind of stuff. By the way, first and foremost, the word foremost means first. That's all it means. Uh, we can we can uh, look at how this word looks. Foremost. The word for or the, the part for uh, you will recognize from the word before. It just means the front. Foremost. The second half of the word is most. So if you put these two together, foremost means it is most in front. So it's the first. So first and foremost just means first and first, right? You don't have to say that. OK, do you have questions about the reading? All right, let's move to the next page and look at some vocabulary. Uh, we talked about a boarding pass. We talked about class last week. Uh, customs, immigration, suite, travel agency, 旅行代理社, travel agency, uh, travel that someone who works at a travel agency is called a travel agent. A travel agent. 
Right. Ah, we should also talk about this. Sweet. S U I T E is pronounced sweet. It's from the French. Um, we mentioned that this is a big hotel room, right? Uh, sometimes you will see the French version of this. The full uh, term in French is en suite. No, no, en suite. Uh, E-N, suite. No, okay. E-N, S-U-I-T-E. Uh, and it just means the same thing. But that way you know what you're looking at if you ever see it. Okay, uh, next we have verbs to arrive, arrival time, which is when uh, your plane is supposed to arrive or your train is supposed to arrive. Arrival card, check-in, check-in baggage. Ah, baggage is another word for luggage. It's the same thing. Uh, the root of the word is different, right? Lug is something heavy you carry around bag you know what a bag is uh, but luggage and baggage are both big uh, packs of things you take with you when you travel baggage has another meaning though sometimes the word baggage can mean a kind of burden um, so you can say that someone has a lot of baggage it means that they have a lot of things that they are always thinking about in their mind. Uh, confirm, chiren, depart, departure time. We talked about departure. The verb is to depart, to leave. Let's see, carry on, carry on baggage duty-free check-in time. Ah, the check-in time. When you check in, there's actually a deadline. Uh, you can't just, you know, calculate how much time you need. There's a deadline you have to get to the check-in counter before a such and such a time, or they won't process your uh, documents. Uh, so when you buy a plane ticket, make sure you pay attention to the check-in time. When you get on the plane, right, when you board the plane, there's also a boarding time. If you miss the boarding time, the gate will close and you won't be able to get on the plane. Even if the plane is still there, uh, the flight crew will not let you on the plane. So also pay attention to the boarding time when you get your boarding pass. Suffer from jet lag. Take in the sights just means to go sightseeing, to be a tourist. To take something in means to enjoy something. And here the word sight, the word sight originally means it is the noun of see. The verb is see, the noun is sight. Um, but it also came to mean what you see. The thing that you see is also a sight. And so if you're going to a place for the sights, you are going to see the sights, you're going sightseeing. You're being a tourist. So take in the sights is to be a tourist. Uh, you also have the phrase take in the view. So it's something in front of you is very beautiful. You can enjoy the view, take in the view. Uh, okay, essentials, we talked about this. Frequent flyer miles, we talked about this. Lug, multinational corporation. 
Uh, some people say multinational. Some people say multinational. There's no difference. Replacement. To replace something is uh, to exchange one thing for another. Tidai. So a replacement is something that you use to replace something else. Tidai ping. You can see from the word, right? Place. And uh, the beginning re means again. So you put something else in the same place. T typing. Um, traveler. OK, so the word traveler in American English is actually only one L. T R A V E L. E R. Traveler, right? If you look at the bottom of the screen, this is American English. Traveler. One L. Two L's is usually British English. Uh, turbulence, upgrade, we've talked about these words. OK, do you have questions about the vocabulary? All right, let's uh, do some questions. Uh, let's take a look at the questions in part A, and I'll give you uh, five minutes to do these questions. So, number one, what is Mr. Thompson's position? What is his job title? That's Two, what factors does Mr. Thompson's secretary have to consider? What does she have to think about? Three, what does Mr. Thompson do before his flight? Four, what is jet lag? How can you avoid it? Five, explain the saying, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Six, what does Mr. Thompson need upon arrival? OK, so here the word upon just means on. Uh, in Chinese, we call this yi dan. So yi dan di da, on arrival. Seven, what advice does he give other travelers? Eight, why does he need a hotel suite? You know what? Actually, let's do these together. Let's look at the uh, each uh, the answers together. So, one, what is Mr. Thompson's position? He is an international sales representative. Uh, yeah, an international sales representative. That's his position. Number two, what factors does Mr. Thompson's secretary have to consider? Let's see. She has to consider check in time, departure and arrival times, visa requirements, if any. Three, what does Mr. Thompson do before his flight? Let's see. First of all, he supervises his secretary. Here, he arrives at the airport two hours before his flight. He checks in, gets his boarding pass, uh, learns his gate number and seat number, and he may visit the duty free shops. What is jet lag? How can you avoid it? Jet lag is when your body feels tired because you have changed time zones. Uh, and so your body feels like it needs rest, but the time is wrong. Or your body feels full of energy, but 
the time the local time says it should be time to rest. That's jet lag. How can you avoid it? Heck, I don't know. Get enough rest, maybe. According to the textbook, right? It says try to get plenty of rest before and after your flight. Uh, because you might suffer from jet lag. So uh, Mr. Thompson says try to rest more. But some people say try to rest less so that when you do sleep, you will sleep better. Or something many different ways. Who knows? Explain the saying when in Rome does Romans do when you enter a different culture, try to follow the local customs. What does Mr. Thompson need upon arrival? When he gets there, what does he need? He needs his passport, visa and arrival card. And he will also need to pick up his luggage. What advice does he give other travelers? These four paragraphs are his advice. Pack lightly. Don't carry a lot of cash. You can use credit cards. Get plenty of rest. Uh, follow the local customs. And why does he need a hotel suite? Mr. Thompson often has to entertain guests at his hotel, so he will need a large suite. OK, do you have questions about these eight? OK, if not, we have questions that you can do by yourself, these eight questions, so let's take a look. Uh, one, Mr. Joseph Lee has been an international something for many years. A, travel agency, B, multinational corporation, C, sales representative. Two, how many pieces of baggage will you be Miss Augustiadi? It's a very weird name. Uh, a, leaving us, B, suffering from, C, checking in. Three, Mr. Takashim, Takashimaya, also a very weird name, will be sitting in when he flies to Bangkok. Bangkok is, uh, I can't remember. What's the Chinese word for this? It's in Thailand. Mangu. Bangkok, yes, Mangu. Uh, yeah, you should remember this is an important city to remember. Uh, so where will he be sitting? In duty free, first class, or his clothes? Four, make sure that all your are in order before you travel overseas. Travel documents, flyer miles, or family members? I think the answer is all three, but like which one are we like learning about in this unit? Five, travelers checks. It spells it in American English, one L. Very interesting. Travelers checks and are much safer than bringing a lot of cash. Credit and debit, credit cards, credit unions. OK, interesting. Um, the answer is B. I'll give you the answer immediately. Credit cards. The other two options are very interesting. De credit and debit are two ways of paying for something. If you pay with credit, that means that you promise you will pay later. If you pay with debit, that means that you pay immediately. But it's not with cash. So a debit card in Chinese, we call this jingrongka. Right, if you use a debit card, the money disappears from your bank account immediately. 
Um, but this is not the answer because it's missing the word card. Right, credit and debit are concepts, they're ideas. You can't pay money with an idea. C, a credit union. Uh, a credit union is an older form of bank. So today, a bank, you can do many different things. A credit union exists only to let people use its credit card. That's its only function. Uh, some credit unions still exist today. So if you want to have a credit card, but you don't want to deal with all of the other things that banks do, you can try using a credit union. The word union means together, hui or something, mong, something like that. Six, Mr. Abdul Muhammad, finally a normal name requested a large to privately entertain his customers. Sweet, carry on baggage, medium or small. <laughs> large, medium or small is what they ask you at Starbucks. Uh, privately here does not mean in secret. It just means outside of official business hours. Seven, it's okay for you to first class Mr. Domingo, have a nice flight. Entertain to. This is not a phrase. Don't memorize this. This is not a phrase. Depart to, upgrade to. Number eight, please make sure that Mr. Singh has enough time to, through our catalog, Mulu. Usually this is a, a product catalog, sales catalog, Xingxiao Mulu. And you can see that the American spelling may not have the UE. Catalog. Uh, OK, has enough time to something through our catalog. Browse, pack, advise. Uh, I'll give you the answer to this one also. It's browse, liu lan, to browse, to skim, to flip through. Just means to uh, look through very casually. Xiu xian de qu liu lan. Pack is a verb and a noun. To pack a pack, Advise with an S is a verb. It means to give advice. Advice with a C is a noun. Uh, okay, let's take a short break. And uh, during the break, you can do these questions. We will compare answers when we come back.
OK, let's compare answers. Number one has been an international C sales representative. Number two, how many pieces of baggage will you be? C checking in. The trap here is A. To there, you can say you want to leave someone something. So you can say what, uh, how many pieces of baggage will you leave us with? Which means how many pieces will you give us? But here it this is probably the check in counter, so you want checking in. Number three, sitting in. B first class. Yes, he will also be sitting in his clothes. It would be very weird if he were not wearing any clothes, uh, but the main point is where he is sitting. Four. Make sure all your travel documents are in order. A. Five. Uh, we we gave the answer is B credit cards. Six. Requested a large A suite. Seven. Okay for you to. C, upgrade to first class. Number eight, uh, we also gave you the answer is A, browse. OK, questions? All right, let's go to page 61. Here we have compound nouns. These nouns are made up of two or more words. So which words from A and which words from B go together to make one word? It gives you an example. Sales D representative is one word. There are two parts, but it's one word. It's a compound word. Fu Fuhamingzi, compound noun. So the rest of these, which one fits with which one? We have seen all of these before. Wait, have we? Which one goes with number? Oh, I think I know. OK, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have seen all of these before. Um, there are 14 of them. I will give you. 10 minutes. And then we'll compare answers.
OK, let's compare answers. Number two, travel. I agency. Number three, duty. G free. And there's a hyphen in between. Your Lianjie Hall, duty free. Duty free, a duty free shop. A duty free shop. There should be a hyphen in the middle. It's only in Gaia or Lianjie Hall. Number four, jet. A lag. Number five, business. L class. Sang Wu Chang. Six, customs and M immigration. Number seven, hotel. B reservations. Ding Fang. Eight carry on. K baggage. Nine. Hmm. Economy should be L class. So what does business go with? Oh, sorry. Business uh, five business is C card, a business card. Ming Pin. Nine economy is L class. Sang uh, Wu Ten boarding. O pass. Eleven travelers. E checks. 12 departure and F arrival. This is not really a compound noun. It's not really a word. It's just two words that often go together. 13 credit, no 13 credit card. So what does business go with? Uh, anyway, 13 credit is C card, credit card, Xionka. 14 gate, J number, gate number. 15 frequent, N flyer miles. Okay, so which one have we not used? We've used all of them. So which one does business go with? OK, hang on. How many letters are this? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O. Yeah, 15. We have a choice we haven't OK, hang on, give me a second. Apparently the one we have not used is H customs. Business customs. Very weird. It makes sense. Um, 
Customs is local culture, the way that local people do things. And one thing that people do is business. So different places will do business in different ways. Um, OK, sure. So uh, number five business is H customs. By process of elimination, Sanchifa. OK, do we have other questions about this one? OK, so here the textbook reminds you how to make sure that you have learned new words, how to really remember them. So if you when you learn a new word, if you do all seven of these, that means that you really have learned this new word. You really do know this word now. One, I found the meaning of all of these words in my dictionary. Two, I know how to pronounce them and where their stress marks are. Three, I know each word's noun, verb, and adjective forms. Uh, Four, I made a grammatically correct sentence for each word. Five, I understand how these words are used in the reading. Six, I know how to pronounce these words correctly. Seven, I know how to paraphrase the vocabulary. So if you can do all seven of these, that is the best way to learn a new word. OK, next page, we have a map of Taoren Airport. Again, the textbook is very old. Um, it used to be called CKS International Airport. Um, and this is for Terminal 1, the Hangxia. Um, and these maps, one is for entry, one is for exit. Um, Airports are designed so that when you enter and when you leave, you go through two different places so that you don't get confused. Um, so let's look at um, the first map. It looks like there are many different ways you can enter, but mostly the road is here. Right, so you have cars. Uh, I think this is MRT. Uh, the the oh no, this is an old map. We don't have MRT yet. So cars. The road stops here. This is a baggage cart. If you have a lot of luggage, um, you can get a, a push cart and you can put everything on the cart. Twitter. Uh, there, this is a bus station here. Um, I think this was before they had uh, the inter-terminal shuttle. So, Hangxia, what So, this is where you would go to change to another terminal. Um, Reception, so this is where you would, um, if you need help, if you ask questions, uh, you would go here. This dollar sign is where you can exchange money, but it's more expensive than doing it at a bank. And then all of these are check-in counters. Um, so, Depending on which airline your plane is, 
or depending on where you're going, you would find the correct check-in counter and talk to the flight crew standing behind the counter, give them your luggage, and they would uh, tag, put a tag on your luggage, a label, and then take it away and they would put it back here and they would process the luggage. If you bring biological stuff, animals and plants, you also have to bring it here for inspection and registration. Uh, it's it's uh, for biological safety. Uh, Okay, and then the exit. This is not the airport that I remember. Anyway, um, there's also a, an area where you can rest. Um, it's not for a long time, but like if you need somewhere to take a short nap, you can go here. And then on the bottom, we have uh, common symbols used in indoor maps. Uh, this one, so here, this one. Tourist services. Let's see what else. Parking. First aid. First aid in Chinese is ji jiu. Aid means help. So the first help, the most immediate help, ji jiu. First aid. Lost baggage. If your luggage is lost, you can go to this counter and ask for help. Okay, wait. I think this is the wrong symbol, right? It's a dollar sign. No idea what this is. But yes, foreign exchange where you can exchange money. Baggage claim. This is where you go to pick up your baggage after your flight. And tax section. This is where you can go to get a tax refund. Oh, I get it now. Okay, yes. So it says entry. What it means is when you enter the airport after a flight. Does that make sense? That still doesn't make sense. Okay, I have no idea what's going on with these maps. Um, but luckily, Tauren Airport is not very big. Um, if you ever go there, it's not easy to get lost. It's very easy to find your way around. Not very complicated. OK, next page. So at the top, we have questions or we have like sentences. And at the bottom, we have some replies. So the point is to match the sentence with the best reply. So let's look at the questions. One, my hotel is far from your office. Two, I think, OK, so it gives us the answer for this one. So my hotel is far from your office, goes with E. We'll try to get you a closer one. How nice. OK, two, I think I'm too early. 
three, my flight has been delayed. Uh, which means it's coming later. Four, what do you usually do after work? Five, can your staff speak English? Six, how long do you plan to stay? Seven, you look very tired. Eight, may I speak to your boss? Uh, Nine, what time is your flight? Ten, how many bags do you want to check in? Eleven, can you recommend a good restaurant? Twelve, how was your flight? Thirteen, what time should I check in? Fourteen, nice to meet you, Miss Wu. Fifteen, is Mr. Young in? Tadzaima, is he here? Is he in? So, of course, if he's not here, you can say, no, he's out. Let's look at the answers. A, I usually go to a tea shop. B, it must be the jet lag. C, for how long? D, seven in the evening. The 7 p.m. E, we'll try to get you a closer one. We already used this one. F, just one. G, may I know who is calling? H, better early than late, right? I, for about a week. J, most of them can, but not very well. K, a thousand, please. L. Yes, there's a nice Italian place on on uh, Zhongshan North Road, Section Six. Zhongshan Beilu Liu Duan. M. About two hours before your flight. N. It was pleasant. O. Yes, but he's in a meeting right now. P, please just call me Tina. OK, um, if you don't have a paper textbook, you might have to go on Moodle to open the textbook file to look at the answers. I'm going to show the questions and you, um, you're going to have to go online to check your options and I'll give you 10 minutes to do these questions and we will compare answers later.
OK, let's compare answers. Number two, I think I'm too early. Is H better early than late, right? Number three, my flight has been delayed. C for how long? Four, what do you usually do after work? A, I usually go to a tea shop. Five, can your staff speak English? J, most of them can, but not very well. Six, how long do you plan to stay? I, for about a week. Seven, you look very tired. B, it must be the jet lag. Eight, may I speak to your boss? G, may I know who's calling? I have to say, this is not a very good response. A better response is to first answer the question, right? The person is asking, can I speak to your boss? You should first say, yes, of course. Then you ask, what is their name? May I know who is calling is asking, what is your name? Nine, what time is your flight? D, seven in the evening. 10, how many bags do you want to check in? F, just one. 11, can you recommend a good restaurant? L, yes, there's a nice Italian place on Zongsan North Road, Section 6. This is also not a very good answer. Zongsan North Road, Section 6 is very long. You should try to give a more specific address or location description. 12, how was your flight? N, it was pleasant. Pleasant just means good, nice, good, pleasant. It was fine, it was good. Pleasant. The word has the same root as please, ching. Please is used as a polite word because originally it, the, the original meaning of the word please is a verb that means to make someone happy. So to please someone is to make someone happy. Um, so originally, the word please as a polite word was if you please. So if it would make you happy, then do this. And over time, it got shortened into the word please, ching. Uh, and so pleasant happiness. Uh, OK. 13, what time should I check in? M, about two hours before your flight. 14, nice to meet you, Miss Wu. P, please just call me Tina. And 15, is Mr. Young in? O, yes, but he's in a meeting right now. Questions? OK, on the next two pages, this page has a lot of personal information. And the next page has a hotel registration form. So the activity is to put the information on the first page 
uh, copy that information and put it on in the right place on the second page. That's a lot of information, so uh, let's take a short break and we'll look at this when we come back.
OK, let's take a look at the personal information that we have. So here's the activity. Your manager is going to attend a trade show in San Diego, California. And a jingli manager is going to attend a trade show. Uh, uh in San Diego, California, Jazo Santiago, Santiago. The organizers of the show have made special arrangements, Tobia Ampai, for participants to stay at the San Diego Paradise Point Resort. Du Jia Fan Dian Resort. To complete the registration form on the next page, you will need to check his business card, credit card, and flight itinerary below. Itinerary just means schedule. An itinerary has to have two kinds of information, or three kinds of information. Two, two kinds of information. Time and place. What time do you have to be at what place? Is an itinerary. He is traveling alone, and he is a non-smoker. Okay, so let's see. This is the business card. He works for RT International Limited. Uh, the address is in Keelong. Jilong. His name is Kevin Kai Ya Wei. Wei Kai Ya. Also a very weird name. Uh, OK, his credit card is with the Bank of Taipei. Which does not exist. It's with the credit card company Visa. Uh, this is his card number. And this is the expiration month. And year. The credit card expires in October of 2004. And this is his flight itinerary. One person. And he's a mister, he's a guy. F uh, his. Uh, flight from. Taipei to San Diego is flight UA 844 departing June 6, 2003. Um, I guess this is his seat number. And then his return flight from San Diego to Taipei is UA845 departing June 11th, 2003 seat number. Remarks, so here the word remarks just mean notes. Mileage plus member premier. OK, so he has some um, kind of discount. He's a member of some kind of program. And the person who is uh, processing his ticket is named Michelle, employee number. It is issued on May 12th, 2003 at 1015 AM. Oh, sorry, this isn't the seat number. This is departure time in Taipei. Arrival time in San Diego. This is departure time in San Diego. Arrival time in Taipei. Right, OK, so that's the information. Um, this is the hotel registration form on page 65. Guest name. Arrival date, time, departure date. Address, name, 
company or organization, address, city, state. This is the US, so they ask for a state. Uh, we can just put in the county, Xin. Zip code. This is the postal code, Yu Di Chu Hao. Uh, the word zip is actually an acronym for something. ZIP. I can't remember what zip stands for. I think it stands for like zone identification protocol. Something like that. But it means postal code. Country, phone, fax, email, room preference. Single room, double room, smoking, non-smoking. Today, no hotels offer smoking rooms. They're all non-smoking rooms. I have the following special needs. Guarantee with a credit card. Guarantee means uh, to promise. With a credit card. Circle one. So which kind of credit card? Which credit card company? Card number, expiration date. Print the name as shown on the card. So if you remember, the credit card also has his name. Write this name. Exactly as it looks like. Uh, I authorize the hotel to charge one night's room. Charge means to take money from me for something. Uh, one night's room rate, Fedu, plus tax to this credit card if I fail to show up without canceling my reservation by 4 p.m. on the arrival date. So, if Cancel a reservation. Uh, Signature. Qianming, date. Please return by mail or fax by 5 p.m. Pacific time. Blah, blah, blah. To blah, blah, blah. OK, so. Um, let's do this together. Guest name, first name, middle name, family name. In the US, uh, sometimes you will see Last name, Josie Sometimes you will see surname. Yes, There are three ways to say this last name, surname, family name. Okay, so who is this guy? First name is Kevin. Middle name is Kai Ya. And family name is Wei. Arrival date and time. So the arrival date is June 6, 2003. The arrival time is 2.25 p.m. The US does not use 24 hour system. It uses the 12 hour system. So if you go to the US and you write 1425, they don't know what that means. You have to write 2.25 p.m. Departure date, June 11, 2003. Address here. It looks like he's using his uh, business address. So 14th floor, 333. You don't have to write number. 333 is enough. Keelong Road, Section 1. Oh, it's in Taipei. Taipei, Jilong Lu. Sorry. Taipei 104, Taiwan ROC, Republic of China. Uh, this is the standard address order. Right? First, the location, then the road, then the city, or uh, city, and if there's a county, then the county. 
then the postal code, and then the country. The country always comes last. So this is the opposite of Chinese. Name. Oh, oh, OK, I see. So the address goes here, address. So the name is the same name as the guest name, right? Kevin Kaya Wu. Uh, way company organization. Uh, they have a different you have to put in the name twice because sometimes. Uh, you want to use a different name for the person handling the information. Uh, but in this case, it's the same person. Company organization. RT International LTD. Address we just talked about the address city OK, so the address only goes to the road. What was it? 14 floor 333 Keelung Road. Section one. So you put that in the address. City Taipei. State. Write N.A. N.A. Gosh. N.A. N.A. stands for not applicable. 不适用. Right, so in state right NA, zip code, postal code is 104. Country, Taiwan ROC. Most places today recognize the name Taiwan, so you don't have to write ROC if you don't want to. ROC stands for Republic of China. Phone number. Include the country code, 国家代码. It's actually better if you add a plus sign, 前面加一个加号, uh, to tell the person that this is a country code. So the number is plus 886-2745-9870. The fax number. Transit Homa plus eight eight six two two seven four five nine eight zero zero. Email here KWEI at RT underscore INTL dot com dot TW. D Shin in Chinese, uh, in English, we call this underscore. Score here means a line, a straight line. So an underscore is a line in the uh, at the bottom. Dixian. Room preference. Okay, it says that he is traveling alone and is a non-smoker. So room preference is single room, non-smoking. He has no special needs. His credit card is a Visa card. Card number 89004587001345 Expiration date October 4. Print the name as shown on the card. So you have to write exactly the same name. Kai hyphen ya way. Signature date. OK, so we have finished filling out the form. Do you have questions? All right, next let's move on to speaking. So 
when you're talking, sometimes you want to make sure that the other person understands what you're saying. And sometimes you want to ask the other person to say it again because you didn't catch that. So here are some phrases you can use. Um, don't use number one. Number one is very rude. Use number two. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to you? Do you see what I mean? Am I making sense? Uh, number five is also not very polite, so don't use number five. OK, and then it, um, here are some more. Did you catch that? Number two is also kind of rude. Is that clear? Don't use this one. Three, right? And six, got it? These two are also not very polite. Did you get that is if the other person is supposed to be writing something down? So did you manage to write it down? Did you manage to get a note? In that situation, it's fine. But if you're just talking, uh, saying this can be rude. So the second is But OK, and if you did not catch the information, you can use some of these. Uh, it says that use one of these and then use one of these together. So, excuse me, what was that again? Pardon me, could you repeat that? I beg your pardon, would you mind repeating that? I'm sorry, I didn't get the last part. May I interrupt? Could you say that again, please? And you can also use some of these. What? I didn't get that. What did you say? I didn't catch that. Huh? Don't say huh. Uh, also quite impolite. I didn't get the last part and you lost me. OK. So here we have a dialogue. On an airplane where you can practice some of these phrases. Yeah, OK, so find a partner. Uh, and practice this dialogue. I'll give you five minutes. Wait, I think there's some new vocabulary. OK, window shade. Uh, here it means Chuanglian, but on an airplane it's it's like one thing. So pull down your window shade, la sha chuang chuanglian, was a chuang zhao. Yeah, that's the only word. OK, it's a good answer.
OK, now that you have the basic phrases, there are three situations below. A foreign client calls your office and needs your help. You must do two things. Help the client and report what you did to your boss when he comes into the office. So uh, there are three situations. One, the client is lost and is asking for directions to your office. Um, you can pretend that this classroom is your office. Two, they are stuck in traffic and will be later than expected. Three, they would like to reschedule for tomorrow. Reschedule, guys, again. So again, you and your partner, one person will be the employee, Rengong, and the other person will be the client and the boss. So first help the client and then tell your boss what, uh, what happened. I'll give you 10 minutes. Choose one situation.
OK, let's keep going. On page 68, here are some things that you might want to take with you on a trip. Um, so let's look at some new vocabulary here. Shampoo, xi fa jing, to wash your hair. Sneakers. Uh, another name for sneakers is tennis shoes. Wang chou xie. In Chinese, we just call this chou xie. Diary, where you write about your daily life. Ju ji. Wallet, where you keep your money. Pi jia. A Walkman or Discman. This is a really old textbook. Um, it's a music player. I don't think we have we use these anymore, right? We just use our phones. So back in the day, if you had a cassette tape, kasi nega luing dai, you would play it on a Walkman. And if you had a CD, you would play it on a Discman. If you had MP3s, you would buy an iPod and play it on your iPod. Today, we just use our phones. Briefcase. This is the case that business people hold. Someone just moved in. P. Xiang. Calculator. You can use it to do math. Qi Xuan Qi. Again, we don't need this. We use our phones. A necktie, or sometimes you just call it a tie. Ling dai. You tie it around your neck. That's why it's called a necktie. Hairbrush or comb. So brush, comb. Uh,男女用的梳子不，那个英文单词不一样。Soap and deodorant. Deodorant is what It's to get rid of body odor. It's what it is. It's a thing that is Something like that. Uh, Westerners like to use deodorant a lot. Aspirin. In case you have a headache, 头痛药, Adapter, 转换器. Usually this is for your power cord, 电线的转换器, adapter. Uh, some countries have a different power system than Taiwan. Hair dryer, 吹风机, for your hair. Gifts for hosts. This is very important. If you visit somebody, you should bring a gift. If you go to their house, you should bring a gift. Even in Taiwan, uh, it's better to bring a gift. Travel iron. Ring do. If it's a business trip, you want to keep your clothes looking very nice and clean. So you might want to bring an iron. Ring do. A travel iron is a smaller kind. But usually hotels will also have irons. If you need one. A novel, 小说, 长篇小说. A printer, 列表机, 印表机, 应该是不用吧? Formal shoes, 正式的鞋子. And dark pants, 深色长裤. Usually, dark, uh, pants that are darker are more polite, more formal than this. OK, do you have questions about these words? OK, let's uh, take a long break and I'll meet you in the other classroom. <laughs>